a from dublin to cleveland production hello and welcome to from dublin to cleveland i am logan howard uh, i am again here for part four of the fear of the lord series so we are again uh in chapter uh 19 of psalms uh or psalm Psalms 19, uh, we are going to be in verse 9 again, uh, and this time it'll be the second half, or the two-thirds other of verse 9, and then 10 and 11. Uh, so, as I always say on these episodes, if you'd like to get a hold of us, you can, of course, uh, find me uh, at Logan Howard on Facebook or Banana Man 17 on Instagram. You can find Brendan, Brendan Thomas Merritt on both Facebook and Instagram. Send us an email. From Dublin to Cleveland to gmail.com. Support us in our links by maybe buying one of our t shirts. We'd love to uh, be able to help you out and be, you to be able to spread um, our podcast out with the world so that others can learn about this and hear about God's Word. Uh, that's really what it's all about. So uh, here we are, Psalms 19, verse 9. So the fear of the Lord is clean. We talked about that last time. The fear of the Lord uh, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, that yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. So I'll talk about this today is the fear of the Lord endures forever. It doesn't end. Um you know, if we're going to be with the with the Lord forever, so we are always going to have this respect and relationship with the Lord. We're always going to have this this fear, not necessarily that there's going to be judgment or terrible things happening to us. Because once we are in the new kingdom and new heaven and new earth, it is celebrate all the time. But He's still our ruler and leader, no matter what. Um, so even though we won't have this fear of being punished or beaten for every wrong thing we do, we will have new hearts. We'll have new, we'll be restored and back to where we're supposed to be like they was in the beginning of the garden of Eden. Um, but this idea is, is that it endures forever that, uh, this wisdom and, uh, this cleanliness endures forever. It doesn't end, um, and that's a thing to be excited about, to be passionate about, and to be, you know, cheery that it doesn't end. We get to be with the Lord forever, and we get to, in, you know, go. He will always be there, and we can always have that respect for Him forever. It doesn't stop. Um, the rest of verse nine says, "The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether." It's again this judgment. So when the Lord decrees judgment. Which, thankfully, he is very gracious to each and every one of us. Because the judgment should be death upon the first sin we commit. And boy, would we be dead. There'd be a lot of dead people at really young ages. Because we're all sinners. Um, we don't don't have to be taught how to sin. We just do it. It's just who we are. So, they're true and righteous altogether. He could, in his righteousness and justice he could automatically just execute us off the earth right off the bat but it doesn't uh he is still gracious even in his judgments so he is gracious and his judgments are true and righteous when he declares a judgment it is true and it is right there is not any gray area that you can say well though well 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 he's not a sinner we're all sinners we're all judged more to be desired are they than gold when the Lord judges, when the Lord's fear is to be more desired than gold, yes, more than fine gold. Get wisdom, find the fear of the Lord. Um, it is better than gold, sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. And by his judgments, we can see there are some people who have had some really bad judgments fall on them. They've been really judged and they've been put in their place and we can see that that's wrong. We shouldn't do that. So we're warned by those things. God warns us by stuff that comes into our lives, um, but that others do, the others sin. We are warned to say, don't do that. Don't follow that path. So we are warned by them. Um, and in keeping them, there's great reward. So in keeping his judgments and keeping his commandments and keeping the fear of the Lord, 
there is great reward. And so with what little time we have left, we're going to talk about that great reward is a place when, with Christ forever in heaven. We talked about at the beginning how it endures forever. You will be with Christ forever. If we put our faith and trust in him, this is not we just pray some prayer we get to heaven. This is not we, hey, dear Lord, give me a get out of jail free card so I can go so I can just not have to go to hell. This is not get out of hell free. This is this is abundant new life with our Lord and Savior. And it only comes by believing that he did what he said he was going to do. He said he was going to send his son. His son did come. His son did die for each and every one of us, taking our sin on the cross, dying with that sin, burying that sin, six feet under, taking it, to Hades with him, destroying that sin forever, rising again. That's the key point, because a lot of people die. Not a, people, a lot of people rise again, rose again, third day, with new life and conquering sin forever. The grave has no power anymore. The grave's power was always in, in taking people to death where they cannot. Their eternal being now goes to hell. It doesn't go to Christ with heaven. It, it's just dead. You're gone. But now we have hope. We have a great reward that's waiting for us, heaven. And we can spend hours and days talking about that great reward and thinking about it and just having that as our thought process. We get so distracted here on earth from, from that. We get so lost in the, oh, wow, this video game's really great. Or, oh, wow, this person's really great. Or, man, I'm just in love with this or I'm in love with that. Those things, as as good as they can be, and as you know, they're all gifts from God. They're just moonlight. When God is the sunlight, the sunlight, as you know, when the moon is out, is pretty. Uh, it, it is pretty bright compared to the moon. The moon does nothing. The moon is just there. We see it, but it brings no light to us. It doesn't give us what all that we need and all the nutrients we need. The sun does. Sun brightens up the sky. The moon can brighten up the sky a little bit when it's completely dark. And so when we don't have Christ in our lives, when we don't have the Lord in our lives, those things can be like, oh wow, it's really brightened up our lives. We got a really bright look. I'm dancing in the moonlight. We need the sun. We need the Son of God. We need God. We need Jesus to come and be our light. Not a thing, not a person, not stuff. Um, not as, as my one friend likes to say, his favorite thing or his most, the most motivating thing is women. Not women. The thing that can bring us the most joy, the most, the most glory, the most purpose in life is God the Father. So uh, with that being said, just be praying for us this summer that we would not get distracted by all the other things that come along. Um, one of the things that is a big distraction here at camp is romantic relationships or issues between staff members. We wouldn't get distracted by those things. Be praying for our hearts that we would be able to fear the Lord, that it would endure forever, and that we would be and have this great reward that is waiting for us in heaven. It doesn't matter what we do here on earth and all the effort that we give, but there's still a great reward because we've put our faith and trust in him. It doesn't mean we don't do great things for him. It doesn't mean we don't serve things for him. But those things are not the main things. The main things are the plain things, and that is Jesus Christ dying and resurrecting again, that we would put our faith in him. Not just our prayers, not just our stuff but our faith and all that we are we, we rest it all on him because he's the only one who will pay off any dividend in the next life so uh pray that over your lives as well this week that uh, you would remember that the fear of the lord that the lord endures forever and there's great reward waiting for you so let's let's close in a prayer today jesus lord we thank you so much for all that you've done for each and every one that has listened lord you have done things that maybe even they don't even know that you've done Lord, we're thankful for your judgments we're thankful for your 
faithfulness to us, mm. Lord, that your words and you last forever. Lord, help our fear of you to endure to last forever, that we would always put you in the place you deserve to be in the rule of our hearts and lives. Lord, that we would seek you first in everything that we say and everything we do. Lord, that uh, we would die to ourselves and that everything would just fade away that is contrary to you, that is sin, that is evil in our hearts and lives. We would give those things to you and we would follow you in whatever you ask us to. Lord, I pray that you'd be with us uh, here at camp. I pray that you'd work in every, every heart that is coming to work, that is coming to stay this summer. Lord, that you would bring about a huge amount of people who now know how to live for you and that they would live it out and lord i don't need to see every person who does that but lord pray you'd give us little glimpses of the awesome power that you do this summer and that each cabin leader will be encouraged as the summer goes on uh, and more that you'd be with us you care for us continue to love us as we know you do in jesus name amen Thank you so much for listening, friends. Uh, I will be back again, try to do two of these a week. So uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, bye, friends. Bye-bye.